hello, hello. Thank you all for, for being here. I'm so excited to uh, to be presenting this talk with you all. Uh, uh, typical housekeeping stuff, please mute your phones, etc. <laughs> um, my name is Scarlett, and uh, one of the accounts that I have is, is Dance Coach Scarlett. Um, they, they didn't have enough letters for me, so uh, so so that's that's why there's missing vowels at the end. Um, I wanted to give a heads up that uh, this talk is about uh, dancing in virtual reality, stage dancing, etc., uh, with a, with a focus on stage dancing. And uh, because it's a 101 class, there's going to be a fair amount of focus on uh, virtual reality uh, technologies, uh, with a heavy focus on uh, the Steam. Uh, platform, which is what I use, and, and some of the problems you can run into, how I've configured it uh, for the types of dancing that I do. And towards the end, then we'll start focusing a bit on, on stage dancing. But I teach lots of different classes, uh, and so this is an amalgam of a few different uh, classes put together, and, and hopefully there's something interesting for, for all of you. Uh, also, a huge shout out to, uh, to B, who is... Um, an individual that's helping me out in the, the live chats. They'll be answering some questions if they crop up um, as we go forward. So let's move on. Um, look at that. I talked about the agenda. <laughs> uh, so about me. Uh, before COVID, I, I had a, a pretty interest, uh, pretty heavy interest in dance, but uh, I was in a situation where I couldn't really go to very many classes, etc., until the last couple years, and then then I really dove in. So I was taking uh, three or four hours a week uh, of dance lessons for for jazz and ballet, and uh, I spent another short while where I added another three hours of lessons a week uh, doing a three different genres of uh, whacking, popping, and locking. I always thought popping and locking were the, the same thing, but or combined, but it's two separate fields. Um, so I've, I've had some formal training, uh, but most of my experiences come from uh, real-world experience in virtual reality. Real-world experience, that's funny. Uh, in virtual reality, I started out just vibing to DJs, uh, then I moved on to playing my own music at after DJ parties in front of a mirror while people were just kind of calming down and vibing, so I was, I was hosting my own music type stuff. And uh, someone pointed me out to some clubs that, that had lessons, and so I started attending those lessons, and uh, well, the, um, I became pretty good at it and uh, became an instructor myself. So I've been teaching for over a year. And uh, dance captain, some of these clubs have 100 dancers. Uh, we dance for, for, for lobbies that fill up, uh, we, double lobbies, in fact, 140 people from around the world. Uh, and when you've got 14 dancers on stage, you got to do coordination. And so there's a dancer radio and all that stuff. Uh, and so, so I'm, I'm one of the people that helps uh, that, that move along smoothly. And I dance for, for a number of different clubs, and they all have different flavors and feels. So with that, with that, we're going to just jump right into the, the technology stack. So with a focus on uh, outside-in tracking, uh, because that's what I use uh, with, all, with all the different uh, track, um, trackers that I have. Uh, the base stations that you set up, it's really handy to actually read the manuals on these things. Um, I find a lot of people don't have them set up optimally, and so I, I wanted to cover... Uh, some of that. So the field of view, it's up there in the graphic, but it's got a pretty wide field of view. Uh, the closer you are, the more accuracy you're going to have in its tracking. Uh, they want you to make sure that you avoid bright light, um, which, which I find interesting because uh, as far as the, the base stations themselves are concerned, um, you also want to uh, make sure that these things are mounted as securely as possible. They have a little tiny motor in it that vibrates around. And if you allow those vibrations to have a resonance effect, that's going to affect uh, kind of the jitteriness of your, your tracking. And so, oh, speaking of, I'm going to talk about this <laughs> in a bit. Um, it's one reason why I went ahead and left, left them on. Um, of what's going on? So... Uh, you want to make sure that you're avoiding obstructions. So sometimes I'll, I'll find students have set up their base station uh, on the wall, and there's a bookshelf 
right below the base station. But that casts a shadow in which the tracker will not be able to track you. So once you get too close to that bookcase, uh, it's the system is having to rely on your one other tracker some in some other corner, and so your 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 tracking is going to start to deteriorate. So you want to make sure it has a clear field view. Um, they recommend that you have it six feet up. Uh, angled at a specific angle down because again that that center point um, uh, it's going to have the most accuracy in the center of it and the closer you get to it uh, and then finally most people start out with the two base stations uh, which they recommend having diagonally at opposite ends corners of the room I included this final picture uh, to demonstrate that that Val uh, five actually um, uh, encourages placement more in the center of the walls and uh, sometimes offset, right? So like you, you want, um, if you have more base stations, you want to move away from the diagonal placements in order to get the base stations to be closer to the thing, the person that it's tracking. Uh, so um, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's that on base stations and hopefully that, that helps you guys. You also want to make sure uh, well, I've got a slide on that in the future, but you want to make sure you, you remove reflections and some other stuff. We'll cover that. Um, as far as the room uh, is concerned, when you're stage dancing on stage, it's really important that you have an awareness of where you are <laughs> because you'll be moving around and you don't want to be bumping into things. Um, my legs are covered in, 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 in uh, scars, actually, <laughs> from injuries that I've sustained uh, doing uh, dancing. Uh, and I'm going to cover about that safety as well. But the very first element of safety is awareness. And so you want to have a border that's being rendered at all times. Um, so here you can see that I have a non-rectangular border that allows me to uh, notch out uh, corners so that I can always make sure I'm, I have the same facing that I that I want. You'll also notice that, um, and this is done, this particular overlay is done with uh, OVR uh, Advanced Settings, which is a free program out there. Uh, and I'm going to show you the settings I use in just a second. The little arrow that you see in the distance, um, in the very center of my play space, that, um, that arrow points, if I remember correctly, it points away from the computer. And that way, um, and different people have different setups, what you want to do is, is, is kind of pay attention to the facing of that arrow and how you are oriented in your play space so that the cord is behind you. You don't want to be doing uh, some kind of groundwork or, or kind of a spin or what have you, and then have your foot catch your cord. If your cord's always dangling down behind you, then uh, it's out of the way. And that's one reason why uh, Steam uh, and, and OVR Advanced Settings uh, has that, that arrow there. Uh, OVR Advanced Settings also has that handy feature that lets you see how many times you've turned and spun and how many times you have to go to unwind. Uh, because uh, every time you spin on these cords, that adds tension that can destroy the cord over over time. I've actually gone through <laughs> I've actually gone through eight cords uh, before I switched to wireless, and then my wireless broke. So right now I'm back to being on cord. <laughs> so the settings that I used uh, for for OVR advanced settings is under the chaperone tab, and I, I check center marker on the bottom left, and I uncheck everything else. Uh, I also set its visibility to 60%, so it's not overpowering, but I can see through uh, anything in the way, so I can see it through the, 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 the pedestal that's uh, in front of me. And then uh, for, uh, I set the fade distance to, to maximum, so it never fades out. I always see that border. I'm always aware of where I am. And then under advanced settings, there's another uh, set of options. Uh, and I do floor only because I I really don't like having the walls come up and and remind me that I'm I'm in this little room of mine. <laughs> I just want the border so I can glance down and get get my 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 orientation. Do 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 do. Next slide. It is not progressing slides for me. <gasps> Are all of, are those all? Oh, see, those are all the slides that apparently got uploaded. Technician, if you want to double check while I wing it, I will just keep going.
<laughs> How exciting! Isn't life full of adventure? Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, well then, ah, uh, so guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, step down from the pedestal. You go ahead and and see if you can fix that in the background. Um, bop, 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 bop. and we'll switch to um. The, this uh, get rid of the pest pedestal, and I'll just stand on the ground because I, I tend to walk around more as I as I talk. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, and now my now my notes are way up here. Hold on, let me let me unpin those, pin lock, bring them down here. There we go. We'll do it live. Okay. Great, right on. So, um, I, I feel better when I'm moving anyways. So, don't want to be constrained and, and stuck behind that little pedestal. Ah, uh, so, 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 so. Eh, screenshot, screenshot about how I do my settings. Uh, the important thing is that you always see the border. Um, oh, I had a really funny slide coming up next. There's a program called Stop Sign V that allows you to uh, put physical objects into your VR space. And so, so uh, people use that to create a big block around uh, their TV and warn them. Like you can set it up to play a very annoying sound as soon as you get close to something. Um, and so, so or or you could use it to uh, indicate where uh, something, you know, a small table is off to one side. Uh, I happen to have a uh, a thin metal uh, object that, that gets in the way of uh, <laughs> maneuvering around in my play space. And so I've got Stop Sign VR. I had a screenshot of it. Stop Sign VR has a, uh, a handy uh, box that tells me at all times where this, this, this metal object is. So you can use that uh, to, to accentuate uh, your performances. If you make use of props or what have you, you can uh, have that always be visible in your world. Great program. Um, and finally, Finally, on, on the topic of rooms, uh, people um, in classes complain that they, they don't have enough space to dance. They've only got a tiny space. And I tell you, I tell you, there's no excuses uh, in life. If you, if you have something that you're enjoying, if there's something that, that, that uh, you want to do more of, but you're not feeling confident because there's all these other excuses, ah, ditch the excuses, just start doing it. There's people, there's dancers that I know that uh, they have a three by three space that they they dance in, and they're 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 like top tier dancers. And uh, for the longest time, all they have they can't even get down on the ground if they were doing floor work or what have you, right? So if you're doing a, a dolphin dive, which is a move where you do a handstand and then you 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 allow yourself to curve down uh, and catch yourself with the back foot and then arc up. Um, they didn't even have room to do those kinds of moves, right? So, like, they, they had to focus on... Um, you focus on the constraints that you have, right? And then that gives you an opportunity to um, explore within those constraints, which is true for any art form. So, so you do more... You focus on getting your hip rolls really, really good, right? You focus on... Um, Than that, so, um, you also you also get really good at space moving, right? So like uh, being able to rotate the world, uh, something that I I, I can't. Uh, um, I was going to speak briefly too, farther down, uh, but 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 the point is, I know I have students that have fused spines, um, <laughs> uh, with rods in their back. They're not doing any groundwork. But they are giving their all, dancing on stage in an upright fashion, because that's what they can do. Um, everyone can, can, can do this form. So, uh, when things go wrong, right? Uh, <laughs> there's a saying in the dance community, you're not a dancer if uh, you haven't experienced uh, technological issues. Uh, because uh, if you think about it, we're pushing the boundaries of technology in ways that the designers never anticipated, right? We're, we're, these trackers that we have uh, strapped to ourselves, they originally envisioned this for screwing down onto a keyboard and, and um, 
tracking where the keyboard is. Man, I wish they still made that product. Logitech had a product where you could see the keyboard in real world or in VR space and uh, just always go over to it. And it was mapped perfectly. So you could just start typing away. Uh, that's why they thought these trackers would have, or you'd screw it onto a prop like a, a tennis racket or something. And here we are strapping uh, six or seven of them to our bodies and trying to do a uh, live mocap to, to 70 people around the world, right? Things are going to go wrong. Uh, and the important thing is to just power through it, right? If, if I'm dancing along and all of a sudden my hip starts flying off or, or the tracking uh, stops and I stand still and I wait for it to come back, then pick up dancing. The viewers are going to see me paused and think that that's what I've been doing the whole time. But if I keep powering through, right, and then all of a sudden my, my hand stops, right, and it's frozen, if I just keep going, that looks way better, right? Because in their minds, they recognize that I was still dancing and that it was a technological glitch that caused the pause. So we always want to keep going, no matter what, uh, what kinds of challenges, difficulties we face. We power through. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh. Um, now then, the uh, the typical tracker setup. Uh, a lot of people don't realize you primarily supposed to count the head as one. So so the head and hands. That's three point tracking. Um. So, but some people might call it two point tracking. Just be aware that there's differences here. So three point tracking. Next up is waist. When you're putting the waist tracker on, uh, the most optimal position we found is right, uh, right behind the arm when you um, keep your arms at your sides. And this way, when you have your arm down, you're not gonna be occluding the uh, tracker and losing tracking. Um, if you're doing movements, interacting with the crowd way down low, you're not going to be occluding the tracker on your waist. And then if you're doing, if you're doing groundwork, where you're doing back rolls and what have you, you're not going to get massive bruises because the tracker was more along your backside. <laughs> you should see the bruise that I got when I forgot uh, and had the, the tracker in the wrong spot early on. Um, so kind of at the 4 o'clock position or at the 8 o'clock position, if you were standing on a clock, that would be kind of the ideal positions for the waist tracker. Now, next up, uh, and I do have students that are that are quite good at doing performances uh, that uh, that only have um, four point tracking head, hands, and a waist. Uh, next up are the feet, and the feet. Uh, some dancers will um, strap them to their ankles, actually, because their their models don't map perfectly to the their body's uh, actual size, and so. That can help with uh, with the alignment. Uh, it can also make it so that um, heck, I, I'm honestly not sure why why they do it. Otherwise, I really like having it on the feet because then I can do stuff like go up on my toes and relevé, right? And that actually tracks. Or or if I'm doing if I'm doing a candlestick pose, um, oh, so if I'm down here like this, I can actually trace myself out with my foot. Because my, my feet trackers are, um, are on the feet themselves, and so it's tracking the angle of the foot. The... Some dancers will wear shoes, depending on the floor surface that they have, and you can actually uh, lace trackers into and weave the shoelaces over the trackers and, and make them extremely secure. Uh, me, I tend to wear socks. I've I've got floor padding in here, um, and so, uh, so, so I use the uh, track strap pros that the, the Tundra people came out with. Those are really great because the, the, the strap actually wraps around the heel and really secures the, the tracker uh, to your foot. Um, I don't know how many trackers I've kicked off before I have these straps that <laughs> wrap, wrap, wrap around the heel. Uh, some dancers will actually make their own straps using just uh, inch-wide uh, elastic material um because man even the even the best straps will degrade over time the velcro wears out uh we're really hard on equipment it turns out <laughs> um let's see so moving on from the feet 
The single next best tracker, in my opinion, is that of the, the chest tracker. Well, let's see if that is... Um, that's not tracking. Let me calibrate again real quick. Because I was going to demonstrate... Yeah, okay, I think that's... Yeah, I think it's tracking. Oh, that's right. Uh, so, what this does is it, is it pins the rotation of the chest and decouples it from the inverse kinematics of the hands and the head. So, if I, if I rotate to the left, right, and in fact, if I try to look back towards the camera, right, and I'm, and I'm tracing my body or what have you, um, then you can see that my head can be very, very much at a strong angle versus, versus the torso. Whereas if I turn this off, Come on. Boop, 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 boop. Now when I turn now when I turn left, um, the 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 shoulders kind of turn with it as I as I look to the left. So it gives a slightly less clean approach. You have more more nuance in, in how you can present yourself. Same thing with uh elbow trackers. So this is the single best tracker in my opinion to add on if you're thinking of getting an extra tracker. Next up is uh, you have the choice between the knees or the elbows. And me, I like the elbows because uh, having, having the ability to um, rotate your hand while keeping your elbow in a fixed place is, is just so, so valuable, right? Because then, then I can focus on specific movements um, that, are, that are more articulated. Um, and I can keep the elbow, hopefully, from from snapping into me right or or for for flying out into the the world and looking kind of weird so if i if i turn these off then we'll we'll pop back to um and i'm actually going to leave them off for the rest of this talk um which i'll i'll explain why in just a bit so so now when I rotate my wrist, you can see that the elbow has to follow because inverse kinematics isn't sure exactly what's going on, right? And, uh, and, and I'm not able to turn my head as much as I could before because uh, we're, we're now having to rely on the, the hands and where they are to figure out where it is the heck the shoulders are supposed to be and all that stuff. So, uh, and then there's the knees. Well, the knees, if you have a really good, well-done model, um, knees don't end up adding too much. It can keep the knees from like squishing together a bit when you're doing uh, groundwork uh, and, and you're, you're, you're leaning back a bit. But for the most part, uh, I, I tend not to use the knees. And that's because some motherboards have uh, challenges on the USB stack uh, interpreting all the data uh, that's coming from all these different tracker dongles. Uh, so actually, I got the SW7 from Tundras. That uh, they they use a different USB protocol that's uh, more performant. <sighs> My motherboard still has problems when I have uh, more than um, uh, six point tracking, well seven point tracking going on. So um, adding the elbows, I tend to start having them just pop off. Uh, here and there until I until I replace my motherboard. So um, technically, if you look at Dance Coach Scarlet's Twitter, uh, technically you will see um, technically what the heck you'll see that I have I have enough trackers. I really wish my motherboard worked. I have enough trackers to do 11 point tracking full body for eight hours, and when that dies and those are charging, I can do a five point tracker uh, <laughs> fallback. Um, so I can just keep dancing all night long. And I've been known to, to do that. <laughs> so, let me scroll down. My, I have my offline notes that are just uh, things that uh, weren't part of the slides, but I can speak to what the slide actually said. Uh, so, oh. uh, corded headsets. Oh, and I'll post, I'll post these slides uh, to my Twitter account. Um, so that you guys can see what it is that um, I, I was trying to speak to. So the uh, when you have a corded headset, um, a lot of strain, a lot of cords fail right here where the cord connects to the headset. So I've got a picture up of, of how you can very, very cheaply uh, fix that problem uh, by creating uh, an elastic um, interface rather than the really hard... Um, connection point 
that puts so much strain on the cord. So basically, you use a hair tie, <laughs> one of those little elastic ones you, you wrap around your wrist. You just wrap it around your headset uh, and, and stick the cord through it. And uh, the, my God, that'll save you your, your, your $200 um, cord um, like nothing else. So um, do recommend that little tiny hack if you're going to be spinning and twirling a lot with the, with, with, uh, with the cord. In the clubs that I'm in, we strongly recommend that you get knee pads if you're going to be doing stage dancing. Because there's a lot of stuff where you go down on your knees and you're doing floor work uh, and interacting with the crowd. Have you? Your knees are one of your most important joints. You want to make sure that you protect them. Um, along those lines, uh, it's kind of expensive. So knee pads you can get for like 10 bucks at Home Depot. I mean, like total, total get it. And it lets you pull off some really neat moves like power slides. So you can, you can fling yourself at your floor if you've got a smooth floor. Some knee pads are hard shells. Um, I've, got, I've got tactical <laughs> knee pads with gel, gel inside. And so with those, you can actually slide on carpet easier, right? It's kind of like a Teflon smooth surface. So if you've got, depending on your floor surface, you want different types of knee pads. Um, and my slide talked about three different types of knee pads you could get. Uh, also protecting you is is floor material. So so the um, we don't really recommend the uh, puzzle piece flooring that you can get the foam foam puzzle piece stuff because um, it it's really hard to keep it in place uh, while you're dancing and, and it doesn't really offer that much protection. But that said, there's a inch thick uh, gymnastics padding and uh, man it runs like $150 uh, for for one thing and you need two or maybe three depending on your room size but uh, there's nothing like it for being able to i mean what we are doing is gymnastics right we're tumbling around uh, doing rolls and what have you on stage and so having flooring that protects your body uh makes it easier to do that is is a lot better than when i was doing it on a hardwood <laughs> so definitely do recommend that if you can afford it and it's something that you're going to be doing a lot now Every time, uh, and we're wrapping up on safety and such, every time that uh, you are going to begin a dance, what you want to do is you want to, first of all, take off your headset and make sure that your floor space is, is cleared. Because uh, throughout the day, you'll be walking around um, the room, and you'll be stepping over the Lego piece that you can see. <laughs> but as soon as you put that headset on and you're dancing away, and you stomp or jump onto with your bare foot that Lego piece, you're going to really wish that you had, you had paid attention and, and cleared out your play space. So every time I start class, before we even start dancing, I tell everybody, lift up your headset and make sure, and especially before performances, make sure that your, your, your play space is cleared of anything that you don't want to ruin and anything that you don't want to ruin you. <laughs> so uh, next thing is, is hydration is so important. We're playing a video game, right? And dance, oh, dance can be so absorbing and, and, and we can just totally lose ourselves to it. And before you know it, you've burned a couple thousand calories. And if you've not been hydrating, you're, you're putting yourself at risk. You're, you're definitely putting a strain on your body. So you want to make sure you always have your water nearby. Uh, anytime the DJ is taking a little bit of a break or what have you, or there's a lull, feel free to always get some water. Nobody's going to judge you for that. Dun, 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 dun. And then, uh, heck, there's one more th bullet point under, under safety. Um, but uh, I don't know. I can't remember what it was, but that's okay. So um, we're on to the section about um, the, the actual stage dancing, right? And the performance itself, right? So all of this so far has been preparatory of like, how do we... Oh. That's, that's the slide that was missing, uh, was uh, all the different ways that uh, things can go wrong. So, so uh, if you have something that's reflective, uh, the infrared lasers that are coming off those base stations are going to get confused because they're going to see the base station reflected as if it's in a mirror and it's actually over there instead of over here. So you want to make sure your room doesn't have reflections. I had to take out some paintings that I had because the, the glass, the plastic, um, ended up being too too reflective for infrared. The uh, oh, da, 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 uh, vibrations, as I mentioned, also vibrations with uh, your controllers. Like if you 
if you uh, go down to do a handstand or whatever, and that shock, or if you're throwing yourself into a power slide, that shock can cause you to lose tracking and as before you just keep going uh, you can always try to hide your hide the fact that one of the hands is is acting funny for a little bit as you rotate to the viewer to make sure that they're not uh, seeing that 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 thing having problems um, heck I had a huge long list um, do, 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 do. oh another thing people don't realize is that Greece from, from our bodies, our hands, etc., those can actually cause problems with tracking. And so uh, the little tiny divots on, on the headset, um, on, on, on the tracker pucks, those little divots are special indentations for it to be able to see the lasers from the, from the base stations. And so it can be useful to, uh, to use a cleaning material or, or a very clean rag uh, and, and clear off those oils because that can actually improve uh, a tracker that's acting up. So, pro tip there. So, getting into the actual performance. Well, why don't we dance, right? Like, I mean, why are, why are we doing this? Uh, the reason why I dance, right, is, is to bring enjoyment uh, for others, right? Like, if I, if I could improve the world uh, and, and, and help people forget kind of all the challenges that they have, um, in their their personal lives and just live in the moment. It's one reason why I'm big on 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 public fursuiting. Um, is that uh, it's like a roving Disneyland, right? And and so like people turn the corner and they're like, oh my God, they're transported to being a child again, right? I want to bring that same joy, that same level of just um, pure existence in the moment, right? Uh, and and helping people forget as they see how I interpret a song, right? Um, oh. It's nothing quite like it, where people just say, "Oh my God, like that was just, that was just great." Uh, it's not so much about the um, personal accolades for me as it is about is about having somebody have an experience, right? Um, that means that uh, we want, ideally, the person to be completely immersed into the world uh, that they exist in, right? If I'm doing a dance and I'm up here dancing. I'm accentuating the fact that I'm in a fake universe. I'm accentuating the fact that we're in this, this virtual space, right? Because there's all this space between me. And when you're dancing on stage, oh, it's super important um, because the, the, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's super important because the viewers are down low, usually below the stage. And so this distance is super accentuated. So when you're dancing, you want to make sure that that is as close to the floor level as possible as you're doing your performance. Also, uh, I think this particular avatar still needs a little bit of work because uh, I, I changed the models out um, and I haven't gotten around to changing the, the limb lengths and everything. You can, you can get the limb lengths um, you can get your model if you adjust the limb lengths and everything down to the centimeter. Oh, there's nothing quite like being in a model that's absolutely perfect, where everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. And you can use your proprioception. Oh. So, but this model doesn't quite line up. So when I go down to the floor, um, I'm actually hovering a good two inches over, over the stage. And so uh, I'm on the floor. My feet were perfectly aligned before. And so when I go to this kind of a transition, as long as I'm in this type of model, I'll do a light space movement to bring myself into alignment as I go down. And so now, when I'm interacting with, 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 with the audience from this level, then, then, then everything's uh, copacetic. So I just have to remember to lift myself up a little bit when I stand up, right, so to, to counteract what I just did. When we are, um, da -da -da -dun. so, speaking of space movement, um, space rotation is really useful. So, so I, I keep my, my thumbstick set to do incremental turns because normally I line up my play space perfectly so I have the best tracking while facing the audience uh, and the chords behind me. And... If I have non-incremental turns and I accidentally bump it in the middle of a dance, well, now, now I've, it, it would look more like this. And now I've got to, like, kind of dial it back in to get lined up. 
And I, what I want to do is I want to just be able to snap it right back to where I was, right? So I was facing the camera. Oh, shoot. I just accidentally bumped something. Now I'm back to the, the camera again, right? So, um, so I use that. And then I use OVR Advanced Settings in order to do the micro adjustments. Um, it's, a, it's a setting that you can't see um, that, that's called, uh, uh, I think it's advanced, uh, advanced Walk or Advanced Space Turning Infinite Walk, something like that. But basically, it makes it so that you can hold down a button and, and rotate your world at, at a whim and make it it's designed so you can walk in giant circles and make it look like you're walking in a straight line, um, which is actually kind of handy when you're on stage, right? Because, uh, like, I might, I might be dancing in front of this crowd, and I'm, I'm in the corner of my room, and so I can hold that button, and I've just done a 180, Actually, I didn't want to do a full 180, but whatever. But now, now I can, I can, I can walk all the way over here, right? And so, and and theoretically, I could walk here, right? And I'm pausing when I do it, but but I can do it um, seamlessly uh, in order to use the full amount of the stage uh, that's at my disposal. Right, so so space space turning and also space movement. Uh, so now I'm kind of pushing the stage back so that I have more ability to move further away from the very edge. Uh, space movement is is something that uh, I teach entire classes on uh, in order to optimize our performances. Oh, so um, I need to take. Speaking of. Uh, taking breaks. I know we're almost out of time. I'm going to take a quick drink, though, because my throat is getting a little parched. Hmm. Pardon me. Okay, so. The, um. The, uh, um. Oh. Okay, I had some stuff I was going to talk about uh, regarding um, musicality and the drop. So I'll mention, and, and this is an entire class's worth of thing that I'm going to compress in about 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, most songs have, uh, most pop songs that we we dance to on stage, depends on, on the type of DJs you're dancing for. But um, most, most songs are... Um, they come in waves, right, that have two drops in the middle. Most songs are three minutes long. Every minute or so, the, the, the musician is going to, to introduce a drop, which you can anticipate is the rising of the music, and then a sudden drop, uh, a shift in, in, in anticipation, right? Um, and, then, and then we as dancers want to do something called a power move, where we'll, we'll do something like a, a handstand or, or a slide or, you know... Uh, whatever it is that we want to do to emphasize uh, that moment, right? Because, um, oh man, I, I could talk into the psychology and uh, around, uh, around the amygdala and, and, and how uh, the, the fight or flight response gets translated depending on the, the, the type of venue that you, you're in. So if you're in a dark forest, um, surprise is going to be interpreted as something much more fearful versus if you're you're uh, watching a great performance um, that that'll be translated into excitement or enthusiasm or what have you. Oh man, fascinating stuff! But um, just be aware that there's uh, a whole field that you could study as far as uh, when you're on stage um, and uh, figuring out how to anticipate and interpret a song you've never heard before and still pull off a great performance. Because a lot of times the DJs won't give you a set list, and you're just up there trying try to interpret the song uh, as best you can. Oh, I love that. That's my specialty. Um, I actually do. Uh, I do performances where I say, "Just give me a random song. <laughs> give me the hardest song that you don't think anybody could dance to," and uh, I usually pull it off. Um, so, but it, I mean, that's taken years of practice. Uh, but it is something that can be learned, right? Uh, and then anxiety on the stage. Um, that's perfectly natural. That's perfectly uh, something that, that everyone's going to experience. I'm experiencing anxiety, <laughs> right? Um, hundreds of people are watching me, and uh, everything is not going quite the way I thought it would. But, I mean, uh, what, the trick to, to face down anxiety, right, is to be in the moment, right? Because anxiety is all about uh, 
And I could talk for hours on this topic, too. Anxiety is all about uh, mm, uh, thinking about something that you'd prefer to have happen in a different way. Truth is, we're in the moment. We got ourselves up on stage. <laughs> we're not getting off uh, the stage. And so we just have to power through. So if we can get to the f point that allows us to accept moment that we find ourselves in, then we can start living in that moment and bringing our best performance forward. So some of the tricks that people um, can use, especially beginners, is uh, closing your eyes. <laughs> Unless you have eye tracking, the audience isn't going to know that your, your eyes were closed. I do not recommend people do this for too long as beginners, uh, but for your first dance or two on stage, you can, you can take a 10-15 second pause while you're still dancing and just close your eyes and listen to the music. Um, a technique that uh, we use in, in professional talking, uh, speaking uh, for conferences and what have you, is to, to pick an individual and just uh, focus on them. So you're, I'm, I could be giving a dance uh, uh, to that person in the audience. And then because of the powers of VR chat and the fact that the eyes kind of move around for everyone slightly differently, uh, everybody over there thinks that I'm dancing just for them because my general body is facing them. And then the next song, I could be dancing for that one person and everyone over here kind of feels like I'm dancing for them. So um, there's, uh, you can always turn around, right? I mean, this is a completely acceptable uh, perspective, and some people prefer seeing this view versus the other. So you're giving different people what they want, and it gives you a break from seeing all the audience out there. And it allows you to pick up moves from other dancers. You can see what other people are doing, because dance is all about learning from, from, from other people, learning from each other, right? Uh, taking moves and making them your own. And then the person that, whose move it was that they, you know, they, they see you doing, but with your own flair, they're like, oh, wow. Man, you took that in a direction I couldn't take it in, right? Let me see what you're doing. And then they take your change and they make it something new themselves. Oh, I just love the collaborative nature and the growth and the support in the communities. Um, we're running low on time. Uh, and so let me just scroll through the final slides. I actually covered everything except the last one's improvement. Um, one of the best ways I've heard, I've, I've not actually taken the time to do this, but one of the best ways I've heard to get started in dancing is to take a music video that you really like uh, on YouTube and then play it at, at quarter speed so you can actually see how the moves are done, right? And as you start to get those moves down, you bump it up to 50% speed, right? And then as those moves get done, you bump it up to 0.75. So you can slowly start to learn the choreography of a specific dance and learn those moves. Um, one thing, I missed this slide, of, of always be big when you're on stage. A lot of people will, will get closed down. That was part of the anxiety slide. You kind of get, get, you got to force yourself to be big, right? Because like, when you're so far away, you got to be big. You got to be large and loud, right? Something to do with your hands, because you don't want your hands on your side all the time, uh, is draw random shapes, right? So letters or, or boxes or what have you. Um, just random ideas for, for what to do if you're at a loss of what to do when you're on stage. Um, and finally, I mentioned clubs. There's, there's, there's clubs. I, I, I teach at uh, several clubs. Uh, most of them are 18 plus uh, gates, because uh, they're... they're they're exotic clubs, but there's other clubs that focus on like uh, dancing for, for, for generic DJs and what have you. Um, I'll be posting links to the clubs that I do teach at uh, on my Twitter. Oh, we don't have that slide, but it's um, Dance Coach. Uh, B, would you post it into the chat if you would? Uh, a link to my Twitter, I'd appreciate that. Uh, but it's Dance Coach uh, Scarlet without any vowels, so S C R L T. Um, awesome, thank you. And so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So there's clubs where I teach. Um, man, one of those, those clubs, we, we've got um, lots and lots of people, and, and, and there's like a good six or seven instructors. And so there's lots of different classes. Uh, Dance Code Scarlet, um, you can feel free to send me a friend request. Uh, but also the, um, uh, let's see, I'll be online tomorrow. Uh, doing a kind of an open mat uh, type thing, but then uh, where lots of dancers get together. Um, 
Oh, finding communities is wonderful. Hit me up on Twitter uh, because I know that was a lot of questions that came up uh, in the chats. And on my final slide where I'm, man, there's a QR code so you can find this account easier, etc. cetera, um, was a huge, huge thank you uh, to all of the instructors that have helped me in the past, all of the dancers that I've learned from, because heaven knows that, that, that I didn't come up with everything on my own. <laughs> I've come up with a few moves. But, uh, um, and a huge, huge thank you for the students uh, that uh, have, have allowed me to help them in their lives uh, and, and, and that uh, kind of symbiotic relationship of learning from each other and watching each other grow. That's just been so rewarding. Thank you all for the audience, uh, both, both on uh, Twitch as well as the ones here in the world. I appreciate all of your support. Oh, and last thing, I'm going to drop a portal uh, so that um, uh, into a world that... Oh, uh, and B will drop a join link in the chats so that I can be available for questions. Because I know, I know a lot of this was technology-based, and I know some of you have questions about actual stage performance or moves or what have you, and, and I'd love to answer and, and connect with all of you. Thank you so much. I'm Scarlett. This has been uh, Stage Dance 101. Have a great, great one. Oh. <laughs>